Hey guys, welcome back. Today at Harbour Unbox, we're checking out the Titanfall 2 performance with a nice selection of GPUs. We have 22 on hand, uh, including the the new 1050 and 1050 Ti graphics cards. I've stacked these all neatly here just to show you how many cards we have tested and I've been trying not to knock them over. But in case the testing doesn't turn out to be that exciting, let's just do a, an expensive domino effect. For those of you unaware, Titanfall 2 is a hot new first person shooter developed by Respawn Entertainment and published by Electronic Arts. This is the sequel to 2014's Titanfall and like the original, it uses the Source game engine. The game looks quite impressive on PC, though it has to be said the recommended specifications are quite steep. The developer suggests at least a Core i5-6600 or equivalent processor, and surprisingly there's no mention of AMD's FX series. As for the graphics card, they say a GeForce GTX 1060 6GB or AMD Radeon RX 480 8GB is recommended. I find it interesting that they recommend the 8GB 480 over the more cost-effective 4GB model. Perhaps this suggests the game's a VRAM pig? Meanwhile, for those wanting to game at 4K, the developer recommends a Core i7-6700K coupled with a GTX 1080. So pretty run-of-the-mill stuff here then, right? Also, for those of you wondering, Titanfall 2 uses the DirectX 11 API. As usual, for these benchmarks we've used our overclocked Core i7-6700K system and both AMD and Nvidia graphics cards were tested with their latest drivers. Testing takes place at three resolutions and we're reporting the average and minimum frame rates from an average of three benchmark runs, each of which lasts 60 seconds. Here's a quick look at the quality settings used for testing before we jump to a preview of the benchmark pass and then finally onto the results. As a side note for testing, we've set the difficulty to easy as this makes the player next to invincible, allowing us to take the same path through the test each time without risk of dying. Starting with the previous generation GPUs, we find pretty solid performance at 1080p, particularly given we are using near enough to the maximum image quality settings. Even the GDX 950 averaged 44 FPS and never dipped below 34 FPS. For an average of 60 FPS, gamers will require an R9-380X, and for a constant 60 FPS, the R9-390 will be required. For those gaming at 1440p, you will want at least an R9 380 to stay above 30 FPS, though a GPU such as the R9 390 will deliver a considerably more desirable experience. Surprisingly, even the GTX 980 Ti and Fury X couldn't stay above 60 FPS at all times here. As we know, using maximum quality settings in the latest AAA titles doesn't really allow for playable performance at 4K using a previous generation GPU. Here we see both the 980 Ti and Fury X dipping below 30 FPS at times. The current generation GPUs take things to the next level, well most of them do anyway. The RX 460 struggles even at 1080p, dipping down to 30fps in both the 2GB and 4GB flavours. The new GTX 1050 was slightly better, though the TI model is about as slow as I would go here. Meanwhile we see next to no difference between the 3GB and 6GB 1060 models, but it is interesting to note that the RX 470 is able to match these graphics cards. Jumping to 1440p, gamers will require either a GTX 1060 or RX 470 slash 480. All four produce similar performance rendering between 54 and 58 FPS on average. If you want to stay above 60 FPS at all times, then it looks like the GTX 1080 is still the best solution. As suggested by the developer, those wanting to play at 4K will require the GTX 1080 or the Titan XP. The latter is a nice option if you're a Saudi prince and or a small YouTube tech channel owner. Okay guys, get out your specs for this one as we move to the mixed results. I'm sorry about the tiny font here, I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this, but this is how we're displaying the results for now. Anyway, the results look pretty much as expected. The GDX 980 was slightly faster than the GDX 1060, while the RX 470 almost matched the R9 390X, though the minimum frame rate was a bit lower. Here we see that the current and previous generation mid-range offerings are enough for playable performance at 1440p. We probably didn't need this graph, but what the hell, here it is. 
the best possible argument for selling a vital organ. Surprisingly, Titanfall 2 doesn't appear all that CPU intensive. The single player portion of the campaign only placed around 20% load on our overclocked Core i7 processor. Here we see the load is mostly spread across four cores, with the other four doing half as much work. For those of you thinking it'll be a totally different story in the multiplayer portion of the game, well, we have good news for those rocking low-end CPUs. For the most part, CPU utilization again hovered around the 20% mark, though at times it climbed as high as 30%, albeit very briefly. Before wrapping things up, let's take a quick look at how the RX 488GB compares with the GTX 1060 3GB. Yes, the 3GB model. We have already seen the benchmark results, so we know the numbers, but I thought it'd be interesting to see how the 3GB model performs in comparison to an 8GB card. Testing does take place at 1080p, but similar margins were again seen at 1440p. As you can see, despite the game allocating up to and over 4GB of VRAM, this didn't seem to hinder the 3GB 1060. The image quality wasn't scaled back either, like what was seen in Gears of War 4 at least not to the point where I could notice in our benchmark. For those wondering, the MSI Gaming X versions of each graphics card were featured in this test. Well there you have it guys, Titanfall 2 appears very well optimised, it certainly doesn't require a monstrous GPU for playable performance at resolution such as 1080p or even 1440p for that matter. Uh, the demand on the CPU isn't particularly high either, and I suspect Core i3 and even like AMD FX or quad core APU owners won't have any troubles either. Well that's about it from me guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the testing was useful. Uh, if you have any feedback, suggestions, comments, whatever, leave them below. Uh, and we'll see you on the next benchmarking adventure. To those of you that already support the channel, thank you so much. It's truly appreciated. And to those of you that would like to support the channel directly, I do have Amazon links and a Patreon link in the video description below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, <laughs> um, thankfully, Matt's unconscious right now. I don't think he needs to know about this, so we'll just uh, keep it our own little secret. Thanks, guys.